we're gonna get our Mark 8. But first, before we do that, I'm gonna have the opportunity to do something that I never had a chance to do before. Megan from Volkswagen was able to get us connected with Brad, who runs the port in Baltimore. This is where all the cars come in from Germany when they're delivered new for this specific area. My Mark 8 GTI and Charles's Mark 8 Golf R are both there, so we came to get a tour and to check out our cars before we pick them up. Okay, 7 a.m. we're off to the port and we're here with... Charles. We're here at the Volkswagen thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm using that. Okay. okay. <laughs> I know this doesn't look like much. This building is just looks like a warehouse, but behind this is all the cars that come into the port for Baltimore. Crazy. Also, it's cold and windy. Yeah, we're going to go inside. So here it is, my Mark 8 GTI. And if you check out this color, it looks absolutely terrible in this lighting. Why does it look terrible? I mean, this color looks very different depending on the lighting it's in. <laughs> in this one, it looks like really drab and like pukey colored. Just that's what it is. In the sun, it looks great. Charles' car is over there. Uh, his car is also here, although he won't have it. This car I'll have soonish in weeks. He'll have his in months. Why, why do we have to wait to get it? Like we are here, the car's here. So the release of these cars is a thing that Volkswagen does that's called block release that Megan informed us of. And it's so that all the dealers are getting a car at the same time. Otherwise it would be trickled in all over the country and there would be an uproar online about why they, no fair, they got the cars before I did. So they're trying to avoid that. That's why they do that way. Are we allowed to get in it? Yeah, it's my car. <laughs> I, mean, I definitely don't own it yet, but it is my car. I do what I want. Whatever, whatever. I haven't really messed with any of this button stuff at all yet. Now, the whole internet is in an uproar about the buttons on these cars. Now, they have haptic feedback buttons. You want to know my opinion about them? I don't really have one yet because I don't make a knee-jerk reaction decision based on 12 minutes inside of a car like some media people do uh, and then write them off. I am going to give people an in-depth review on my personal preference about these haptic feedback buttons once I've owned the car for a while and I've driven with them to get a feel for like, okay, how bad is this? Is this really bad? Is this a problem? Uh, yeah, so stay tuned for that. All digital everything. I don't know why this isn't turning on though. It might be because it's in transport mode. Transport mode is something that uh, prevents people from driving cars really fast in these places. So it doesn't limit the power, but it does limit its, its top speed. So I think they don't go over 20. People you, don't get the high speed crashes you, in a lot. <laughs> you, can, you can accelerate as fast as you want all the way up to 20 miles an hour. And this transmission is prime for a short shifter. Large fit, like right out of the box? Right out of the box. We're just going to do it right away. Can we do it right now? <laughs> I, I did. I, it's not something I think would be frowned upon to start working on the car in the bay <laughs> of the port. <laughs> I think it would be frowned upon in this establishment. Frowned upon in this establishment. I do like this um, this honeycomb. I, I actually think it's cool. I, I really, I really, the only gripe I have is this center console feels kind of cheap. Hey, you can't say that inside the port. That's the only, it's my car. <laughs> <laughs> it's my god car. It doesn't matter what your opinion is, because you have to own this car. I dude. bought it anyway. <laughs> I already bought it. So even if I hate it, it's already, yeah. I've already made the decision. We gotta make all the DIYs for y'all. Pretty sure I'm gonna do a DIY to swap this to the Golf R trim, because it's black. It's not, it's not aluminum like, like this here. Mm -hmm. I, li I think I like the idea of having a black one better. This situation here, <laughs> you could fit a very large amount of space here. And if we look at the Mark 7 that's over here, that fitment's a little bit different. We're not allowed to unwrap it. <laughs> I can't believe I actually got that. Ooh, wait, they give us all this stuff? No, I paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't give us that, I paid for that. <laughs> Ooh, they gave us this because we paid them for it. <laughs> port installed accessories. So actually we, fun fact, we're in the port, port installed accessories warehouse, I guess you would call it. These are pretty cool doors. They have these like super fast doors that roll up. You drive up, they open up, you'll pull in and they do all the port installed. If you look over there, Nathan will get a shot of a door opening and closing because they open and close super duper fast. Now, many of you are upset about these. I don't like these either. They're yucky. <laughs> We're probably going to sell touch of paint cans 
like rattle cans that Volkswagen makes to give you the ability to paint over them. It wouldn't be bad if they were clear either or, or even smoked. So they're honking horns a lot because the cars here are all wrapped in like these bags. This car actually doesn't really have one, but a lot of the Audi, Audi cars do. And visibility is not so great when you're driving a car inside of a bag. <laughs> so they honk to say, hey, if you get hit by me, it's your fault because I honked. So we checked out my GTI, but there's one more car. And this is the Mark 8 Golf R. This car belongs to... Oh wait, I forgot to say... 17 speed. So 2022 Golf R, two liter turbo, all wheel drive with a torque vectoring rear diff. Mine's gonna be a six speed manual, which is awesome. Paul mentioned that he's getting his car pretty soon. Mine's a little bit more open-ended because they don't have enough quantity yet. So I guess just like Paul, I can't take mine home today, which is the ultra sad bummer. But either way, super, super jazzed. I'm looking at these cool two piece rotors. What's cool too is this one's getting a 27 horsepower bump over my Mark 7, which is awesome more powers to make race car noises and go vroom vroom. As much as I'd like to hang out inside and look at cars all day, we came outside to check out more of the port and the cars that have been sitting for some time waiting to come to dealers. Pinch yourself, this is not a dream. These are Mark 8 GTIs as far as the eye can see. This is where they are staged to get ready to go on trucks to dealers in the area for delivery. So this is one of seven ports in the country that have this type of setup waiting for markets to be rolling out. They'll be going into the, all the dealers and then obviously R once they come as well. Reflex Silver Metallic, back for GTI. Oryx White Pearl, a first time on GTI. Atlantic Blue Metallic, a first for GTI. King's Red Metallic, a first for GTI. And then farther down there, we've got Moonstone Gray, which is a cool non-metallic color. And then you know it really well, Pamela Yellow Metallic our exclusive color for GTI Autobahn, and then of course, Deep Black Pearl, which has been on GTI in the past. For wheel options on the Mark 8 GTI, we have the 18-inch Richmond, the 18-inch Black Bergamo wheel, and the 19-inch Adelaide wheel. We really wanted to show you cars coming off of the ships. Unfortunately, the day that we were there, it was too windy, and they had to anchor a ship offshore to wait for better conditions to unload the cars. Now we complete our port visit, and we wait for launch day. Okay, it's been two weeks since we came to the port and we're here at Lindsay Volkswagen picking up my GTI tonight and then having our event tomorrow. So obviously our Mark 7 here and our Mark 8, which we're gonna start with the PDI process. Now PDI stands for pre-delivery inspection and that's what all technicians do on cars that are new that come into a dealership before they go to detail and then get put on the lot for sale. We're gonna start with shipping blocks, which we gotta go up to show you. Shipping blocks are something that about one in 10 dealers probably didn't take out of your car. Not Lindsay though, they would never forget them. And this pink guy is your shipping puck right here. Because there's three of these things in there, they, maybe they would take out one or two and then not realize there's another one. So this is why it was so high. But also, if they don't take this out of your car, what it's just gonna do is your car is gonna ride like shit and it's just gonna get smash, 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 smash until eventually it's just like a flat piece of plastic in the car. I've seen cars with like 80,000 miles with this in it. So one of the guys here had a set of blocks. This was in a car that for 45,000 miles, these blocks were in there. So yeah, check your blocks, kids. Now, here's the other thing. Normally, during the PDI process, this guy right here gets mounted to the car. Now, Lindsay is in Virginia, which is for lovers, if you don't know. They also are a place where front plates exist. So normally what they do is they drill these very large holes in your front bumper. <laughs> Lindsay, because they have a enthusiast customer base and employee base, they don't do that. They only do drill your holes if you request it. That is rare. So just something to keep in mind. If you're buying a new car and if you are in a front plate state, you may want to ask them to not drill holes in your bumper before they get the car, because otherwise <laughs> you're going to have four sweet <laughs> holes in your bumper. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Isn't that fun? Isn't that neat? <laughs> also, they put the lug nut caps on. Look at these shiny bolts. Look at how shiny they are. The, there's a wheel lock. It's going to get taken off once we get back because wheel locks are the worst and they only lock you out of changing your tire when you're on the side of the road. These are the new ones too. So, these are the new, lo the new logo. I always like to do is face it towards the valve stem, not that it matters, because in about two seconds, once you drive this car, 
it's not gonna make a difference because they're all gonna be misaligned anyway. L1W, that's our paint code. So if you look, this is the part number for the bumper, 5HO807217 AE, and L1W is our paint code. That's how they know this was the painted bumper for these cars. Now, we did that. The other part of this is a visual inspection. So we're gonna look underneath the car, make sure that there's a car there. Well, there's a steel oil pan here, as opposed to the plastic one. Well, that looks like an aluminum subframe. That is, an, well, yeah, there's an aluminum subframe, which is another Mark 8 thing. And as we move back, we can look at our exhaust. This the resonator is very large. It's a really big resonator. These shields are different. Um, those, those are not on Mark 7. This is for sure different. What is that? This is the um, E-diff stuff. This is definitely a different E-diff completely. I, I knew the part number was different, but I didn't know aesthetically how different it was gonna be. So, plastic, plastic, <laughs> plastic. Now this is not exciting, but checking tire pressure is also part of the PDI process. So let's look at what the tire spec says. And since they have nice lifts here that are all in ground and stuff, we can pull the door open and look at our label right here. So, 39 and 39. Done. Now normally a dealer tech does this job, but on this car I'm doing it so Ebud gets to get paid <laughs> while I do his job. The dream. Living the dream. The literal dream. Somebody has to watch you so you don't screw it up. That's true. That's absolutely true. He's, <laughs> he's helping me not screw it up. All these cars come in transport mode, so we're gonna take this thing out of transport mode so that we can actually use it properly. Part of every <laughs> What's wrong with your voice? I'm recovering from sickness. I don't have COVID, by the way. I don't have COVID, by the way. I got tested yesterday. You just can't wait for me to die, can you? Part of every PDI process is installing a short shifter, or at least it should be for your Mark 8 manual transmission. So, holy shift, we're about to install this. What's, what's better to do with your new car than to put new parts on it. If you look, it looks a lot like all the other ones. So, same deal. I have a DIY on this, and this is gonna be a DI don't, because I'm not gonna show you anything. <laughs> Ebob was very kind to offer use of his tools, and I'm going to take him up on that offer by using his tools. Yeah, nut. We include a new one of these, but on a brand new car, you don't really need a new one. <laughs> brand new car! <laughs> a brand new short shifter. I went, I, I won this from our warehouse. I said, hey guys, can you get me a shifter, please? They were like, those are for our customers, though. Mm -hmm, yeah, so they gave me one that was kind of shit up. That was actually true. I actually did take one that was kind of shit up because some of them we get that were like kind of not the prettiest in manufacturing, so we don't sell them to customers as new. And so that's what I'm getting. I'm getting an ugly one, like the ugly duckling that I am. My fingers are greasy. Why? Because it's new car grease. Yuck. Holy shift. Holy shift. I should have really should have assembled all this stuff before my hands were all greasy. <laughs> but I'm dumb, so here we are. Ah. There you go. Here we go. Oop. Boop, I did it. Connects with these guys right here. So, for any of you boys and girls at home who are looking to do a Mark 8, one, two, three, four, five clips. So, there we go. Oh. Now we tighten it. What are they selling? Chocolates? What? Feels sweet. Your enthusiasm. Kill me with it. I. I'm very enthusiastic. This is my most enthusiastic face I can come up with currently. Also, check engine light. Here's a throw of the stock shifter found in the Mark 8 GTI as it comes from the factory. And here's a throw of the after we installed our short shifter. You can see it is significantly shorter than the stock one. And here's a side-by-side -side comparing the two.
Now enjoy a montage of peeling this car. After we're done with the PDI process, the car got detailed in preparation for our event at Lindsay Volkswagen. Because we're up in the Volkswagen headquarters area, Megan from Volkswagen and Sean from Volkswagen brought out factory cars, namely the Mark 8 Golf R. Lindsay also had a Mark 8 GTI that had a Ottinger kit installed on it, which has the front lip, the rear spoiler, and the rear valance all from the Ottinger body kit which goes on the Mark A GTI. Thanks so much for everybody who came out to our meetup. We really appreciate it. And thank you to Lindsay. We really appreciate them hosting the event. We will be back at Lindsay when Charles is picking up his Mark 8 Golf R sometime in the future. Then we start our long trek home, which is about seven hours, and then this happened. So I just ran over a tire retread. I don't hear anything, so, and I don't see an oil light on, so at least that we got that going I mean, for us. It sounded really aggressive. Well, it didn't sound great. <laughs> so we'll do some inspection. There's no vibration or anything or drivability issues, so we'll have to look when we get back to the shop. So I haven't looked over this car yet. So you're gonna find out with me what kind of damage we have. My S4, when I hit that tire tread, it hit much higher on the bumper, so the front end was destroyed. I think the bill was like seven grand to fix it. So you're gonna find out right now how bad this car is. First thing I see here is that. Uh, that probably will buff out, would be my guess. Rubber there, and you can see that it's rubbing off a little bit so that will probably buff out so that one's probably okay uh hit on this side here where we saw that stuff on the front bumper so i'm looking for damage underneath anywhere you can see there's a little bit oh we did we did break our belly pan that, that's not shocking uh brand new car on a, a brand new car <laughs> get a brand new belly pan <laughs> We did get some pretty good contact with our gas tank, but luckily gas tanks are really resilient. Uh, yeah, we definitely got some contact with this control arm too. But also this super sweet cover shield thing protected us. Aerodynamics also, the thing about aerodynamics is they protect against aerodynamically tires flying underneath your car. Minimal damage. Dodged a bullet. We dodged a tire. <laughs> you didn't dodge it. <laughs> we didn't dodge. I didn't dodge <laughs> I'm ruining my belly pan. Yeah, well, I mean, most people would freak out about this on their brand new car, <laughs> just to be clear. <laughs> just to be clear. This is a brand new car. That is not an inexpensive car. <laughs> so most people would freak the f out about this. So you're probably wondering what our plans are for this car. Obviously, you can see this is the beginning of the parts we have available. This is pretty much all OEM plus stuff that came from the Club Sport Mark 8 GTI in Europe. Club Sport front brakes, we have the Club Sport rear muffler, we have the Club Sport front bumper and all the associated grills. We have the European LED taillights, we have the Club Sport rear valance. Uh, another one, IE did send us an intercooler, which uh, as you can see, didn't, wouldn't quite fit in this shot. So we have a ton of videos coming on this car. Make sure you subscribe and check them out because there'll be a, a slew of them coming.